are excited to have Ehsan with us today to discuss his work at Electronic Arts, as well as his expertise in data engineering and workflow management. Ehsan is currently working at Electronic Arts. Uh, as you know, EA or Electronic Arts is a leading company where he has been involved in implementation of data engineering workflows using Apache Airflow. And let's dive in and learn from Ehsan expertise. Let's start with the basics, Ehsan. Can you explain to our audience what Apache Airflow is and what problem it solves? Okay. Start. So here is the agenda. Um, I'm going to start uh, a little bit about the introduction, which Airflow, what is Airflow is, and uh, then second, I'm going to explain about the primary goal and the benefit of Airflow, which we have. And after that, uh, I'm going to uh, say something about the example of use case of Airflow, what Airflow we are using. Uh, especially as EAs, and then uh, I'm going to start talking about uh, DAG skeleton and uh, then dig into a little bit coding how we can create a new DAG and implement a new task in Airflow. In terms of your question about what Airflow is, um, think of Apache Airflow uh, as a tool uh, that helps automate and manage complex tasks involved in processing analyzing data. It allows you to define a task as a direct acyclic graph, which stands for DAG, uh, and schedule them to run a specific timeline. For example, let's say you have a data pipeline that involves in downloading data from multiple sources, cleaning and transferring uh, it, running uh, some machine learning model on it, and then storing those data into the specific and primary database which you have. The database should be kind of, uh, for example, Snowflake, should be uh, Redshift, Amazon Redshift, should be uh, Google BigQuery. Each of these steps um, is a task that needs to be executed in a specific order, and uh, often on a schedule with Airflow. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to define these tasks, you need to implement some kind of DAX schedule them and run it on a specific time and monitor them and show their progresses. This simplifies the process of managing and monitoring airflow and make it easier to track your data pipeline. So maybe uh, some of you raises this question in, in your mind and said, OK, what's a data pipeline? A data pipeline is a series of steps that we are used to extract, transfer, and load the data from the various data sources and make it available for the analysts and use it. Data pipelines are used in every aspect of data engineering side, which we are trying to do, but um, they are used to move data in from its sources to its destination in a structured and organized manner. This involves extracting, ex extracting and uh, from the various source, such as uh, APIs, files, databases, cloud databases, and cleaning, transferring, and to make it consistent and usable. Well, one of the reasons we are excited to have you here, Esan, is to learn more about the advantage of using Airflow over other workflow management systems. Can you share some of uh, the uh, those with us? Uh, in terms of advantage of Airflow over other tools? Sure. So there are lots of tools uh, like Airflow, but uh, what distinguish uh, Airflow from the other tools is those lists which I provided. The first one is dynamic one. Airflow is a dynamic tool, which means anything you have to done in a Python file, you can do it. And it's really interesting for the Python user developers because as long as you know the Python, you can create your DAX, you can create your Python file and put it in your data pipeline and use it, you know, and it's really interesting. The second, um, yes, the second benefit of Airflow is uh, related to scalable. This means you can execute as many tasks as you want. Airflow uh, is designed to be highly scalable and can handle a large and complex 
uh, workflow without any issue. Okay, and it can be it can be run in we can run some um, tasks in parallel, distribute them across the uh, multiple workers, and uh, you know and handle failures and uh, retries automatically. Uh, another thing is related to benefits of Airflow is Airflow is really highly interactive. As long as you want to work uh, with a command line, you can do that because Airflow provides a, a common CLI uh, interface for you. And as long as you want to uh, interact with Airflow, right, which is show you later uh, in my presentation, uh, you can also work with Airflow UI. And for example, let's say uh, you have a custom data pipeline and you wanted to bring some functionality from Airflow and you can uh, ask your backend developer and frontend developer and ask him, hey, could you please put me a button in your application? And uh, whenever I push the button, I want to run this process. I want to run my data pipeline uh, in my application, not in Airflow. Okay, and this is really, really uh, interesting which Airflow can provide it because Airflow is uh, open source and we can integrate with uh, this feature. Another thing related to benefit of Airflow is related to highly extendable. The last important thing related to Airflow is uh, Airflow is highly extendable. So you can customize Airflow as much as you need. Airflow is highly extendable and you can customize it uh, fit your a specific need. Uh, for example, let's say uh, you have a, a database, okay? And your database is SQL, and you want to uh, create a custom SQL operator uh, on your site. You don't, you don't want to need to use, for example, a public library which Airflow provide you. You can customize it and integrate with other tools and services. We are always interested in hearing real world example, right? of how technology is being used to uh, solve problems. Can you share with us uh, how Airflow has been implemented at EA Electronic Arts Company or other companies you have been worked with? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, the example use case of which we are doing at EA, uh, let's say uh, EA has a data pipeline that involves collecting player uh, player data from various data sources, transferring it and storing in a centralized data warehouses for analysis. The pipeline includes tasks uh, as data extraction, data transformation, and data loading. The pipeline also involves running some machine learning models on the data to generate uh, prediction and recommendation for the player. To manage this pipeline, we are using Airflow. This first this first process, which we are new, need to use Airflow, is to set up an Airflow server, which is related to the infrastructure. We don't involve in this process. We ask just from infrastructure teams, hey, can you please uh, implement a new Airflow server for us? And as long as the Airflow server is provided and configured in a uh, customized process, which, for example, different team Needed. For example, some stakeholders ask us, okay, we are going to use Snowflake or we are going to use Amazon Redshift for these specific titles, okay? So they customize it, they configure it, and after those infrastructure processes is implemented, the next step is going to uh, create a DAG, direct acyclic graph for each pipeline task. So the most important thing and the most uh, important concept of Airflow is DAG. What is DAG? The DAG is in flow is a, is a data pipeline. When you create a data pipeline, you can create a DAG. In Airflow, a DAG is a collection of tasks, as you can see in the slide, that are organized in a specific order and linked together to define a workflow. The DAG define how the tasks are in the workflow are executed based on their dependency. Sorry for interruption. For people that don't have background on data engineering, can you please elaborate a little bit about the data pipeline itself before diving into DAG? Yeah, sure. So data pipeline, as I said before, it's customizes for various data sources which we have. For example, 
we have a SQL server database. We have a Snowflake server, a Snowflake uh, account. We have an Amazon Rich account. Whatever databases we have, whatever data sources which we have. So in order to do um, some processes and to do some analysis, we need a data pipeline here, OK? So data pipeline doing ETL process for us. ETL process stands for extract, transforming, and loading data for us. We at first extract the data, pull from the data for the data source, and then transforming data from the data source in the primary on in the targeted database. And in the process of transferring, we are using Airflow for loading our data into the target. Uh, databases and this is what we are called data pipeline I, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, what exactly means uh, after uh, we reach to the uh, coding part but uh, I'll be sharing my screen uh, and show you a little bit about the DAG data pipeline in this kind of stuff. thank you Esa that was helpful answer thank you so back into the DAG uh, as I said the most important thing in airflow is DAG DAG is a data pipeline, and when you create a data pipeline, you are creating a DAG. Here you can see uh, in the slide. The valid DAG is customizes like these. For example, we have a node one, node B, node three, node three, and node D. Okay, these are directed, and you can see that, for example, uh, C and D depends on node B, and node B depends on node A. We call these triangles is operator, is task. Okay, I'm gonna show you later. And the invalid DAX, which means Airflow is not support this kind of structure and logic in a DAX. Because we can see here is a loop and the DAX is not creating loop in an Airflow. And if there is a loop between C and a, it's going to be not finishing, and it's going to be low, and the data pipeline is going to be low, 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 and the, the process is not finishing anymore. OK, so let me show you the example of DAG here. Here's the Airflow UI, OK? Here is the DAG, which I created for this session, and called it simple bash operator. Here, we have one task two tasks, three tasks, and four tasks. I'm going to explain those tasks, what those tasks are going to do. But the tags here is show like this. There is no loop, and all the nodes are directed and passed to the uh, in a uh, directed process for our data pipeline. Yeah, that's it. Interesting. Okay, so, so the one, uh, sorry for interruption. One thing that's always uh, top of uh, mind when it comes to workflow management is handling failures and uh, retries. How does uh, Airflow handles those situation? Maybe you want to talk about it in uh, uh, upcoming slides about failures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So uh, in order to do some uh, failure process, I'm going to show you in my code. But before jumping into the uh, before jumping into the um, failure, uh, I'm going to discuss about the operator. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. The, the operators. The operators means um, this this node here is operator in Airflow. The concept of this triangle here, and as I show you in Airflow your it means operator. So when you want to create a new data pipeline process uh, for your data warehouses, you need to at first create a DAG and then implement it some operator for your DAG. Because let's say you have some different kind of data sources, such as CSV file, such as, for example, batch operators, such as uh, Amazon S3 file, such as 
SQL file, and we want to interact with those files and load data from that and put it in your targeted database. Okay, so here what operator comes in mind. The node B, as I show you in the previous slide, is an operator. In Airflow, operator is a class that represents a single task or a step within a workflow. An operator defines what needs to be done to a specific point, and uh, such as running a SQL query, transferring files, or executing a Python function. Operator are built blocks of Airflow workflow. Each task uh, in, a, uh, in a workflow is typically uh, generated uh, by an operator instance. Um, and as you can see here, we do have three operator here, which call task. Okay, so operator is a task in our DAG. Whenever we define an operator in our DAG, we create a task for each step. This is the node, for example, this is the node A, which is the operator one, this is the operator two, this is the operator two. And they are doing a different process in our data pipeline. Okay, what type of operator now we have? We do have three types of operator in Airflow. Okay, one of them is action operator, another one is transfer operator, and the last one is sensor operator. These are the main operator which Airflow supports and provides you uh, the detail of that. The action operator allow you to execute your, execute, for example, something in your data pipeline. For example, you wanted to execute a Python file. You wanted to, for example, uh, execute a SQL query. Uh, for example, you wanted to execute a SQL query in your Postgres, Postgres uh, database. For example, you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, run uh, some MySQL uh, query. So we are trying to uh, implement an action operator here. Another operator which Airflow supports is transfer operator. Uh, it defines as a name which I explained it. Transfer operator means you are trying to transfer whatever from your data first. Uh, data sources into your targeted data set. And this operator, for example, you have a data in a MySQL database, and you wanted to load some data from MySQL into, for example, PrestoDB, into, for example, Snowflake DB, or let me, let me say clear, you have a data in your uh, CSV file, you have lots of data in your CSV file, and you want to transfer those files from the CSV file into your database. And this is what this operator is doing, transfer operator. Another operator which Airflow have is related to sensor operator. Sensor operator is absolutely needed whenever we wanted to check some data in our data sources. And we wanted to trigger our data pipeline based on the data which we have. For example, you have a daily scheduled job in your data pipeline, and someone, an operator, uh, pulling data from whatever application and load it into your CSV file. As long as that data loaded into your CSV file, you're going to uh, check that CSV file if it's empty or not. If it's not empty, so you are ready to go and you can run your data pipeline. But it's if it's empty, your sensor is waiting, it's called sensor, your sensor is waiting for the data. And as long as the data is already into the CSV file, you can load it into your targeted database. And this is kind of the uh, sensor operator which is due. And we do have lots of sensor uh, operator in uh, Airflow, such as S3 sensor, Snowflake sensor, and these kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk a little about the Airflow UI, and then we'll discuss about the failure, uh, if that works. Sure, yeah, of course. OK. So another thing related to uh, Airflow, uh, 
is related to Airflow UI, which we can uh, interact in with Airflow and uh, how we can know uh, what this feature used, what this feature used. I'm going to show you later uh, whenever I uh, explain this. For example, let me share the screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, great. So, okay, so here is the Airflow UI which you can see. There is lots of feature, built-in feature you can see here, okay? I'm gonna start with the grid view. This is called grid view in the Airflow uh, UI. The grid view is a bar chart. Let me start the Airflow. The grid view is a bar chart uh, and represented of your DAG is run, or not running. And uh, you can see lots of information in terms of your task, your DAG, which is running or not. Whenever I turn on the, my DAG, it shows a bar chart here and show me, okay, this DAG has started at this time and the duration of DAG is gonna be completed at uh, three seconds and it's started ended and it also show you the data interval for this tag for example this tag started uh, to load it for uh yesterday's data mm -hmm. and give you a little information about your tag and the time of your tag which you can see here okay so whenever i click on this task run bash task one I can see lots of options here, lots of information which Airflow provide me. And this task status is success. It just run one time. Whenever we have failure, I wanna show you later, it's maybe, it's more than this number. For example, one, two, three. And uh, we can see this a specific task is running, for example, lots of time. And it's the call, it's, it's, it's a type of the operator, which I explained it, uh, in the previous slide. This is a bash operator, bash, uh, we can run uh, some Linux, uh, for example, uh, command in a bash operator. And this is a simple operator which Airflow provided. And the duration and the completion uh, time of this task is also three zero seconds, okay? And um, this is what Good View uh, show us. Another uh, feature which Airflow provide us is Graph View. As you can see in the Graph View, you can see the graph of your DAC. Here is the task one. Here is a task two. Here is a task three and the task four. We called these operator, these DACs, and these graph for each triangle which you can see these are the task and these are a specific operator you know and those are just a bash operator but yeah these are the operator which i explained okay so in a graph view the graph view is a perfect view to check the dependency mm -hmm. this task is depend on this task these two tasks depend on these two tasks, and uh, you can see the dependency as relate as well as the relation of your uh, data pipeline uh, and get the status of your uh, task and operator which we have. For example, we can see all of the tasks here is going to be green, so which means these tasks are success. But if for some reason my task is going to be failed the task is going to be changed with the color of red. For example, blue, running, and the schedule, skip, retry, upstream file. Those are the action which Airflow uh, tackled with whatever task which we provided. And um, if one task is failed, the number of the uh, color of that task is going to be changed. Another thing that I wanted to talk about it is the calendar view. Okay, here is the calendar. Imagine a one year calendar, 
but Airflow provides you here with a small calendar here. And our DAC started today, and you can see Monday, we have one successful DAG run at this date, and you can see it in the uh, airflow. As long as all the tasks are run during the year, you can see all the all the statues are going to be green. One, let's say, for example, for some day, maybe it's going to be um, changed as a face, and the color of that task is going to be red. So the calendar view gives you an overview of your entire DAX and the history over the months, over the years, or maybe over, for example, uh, the week. Uh, you can customize it, but the default version of Airflow which provided is over the year. So another important feature which Airflow provides us is code view. In a code view, you can see the quick way of your code that generate the DAC. And it's really interesting that you can see what you are implemented in your Python file, and you can see what Airflow shows you here. So the code view show you the code of your DAC. And another important thing which we have the primary page and the most important page which Airflow provides us. Here is the uh, index page whenever we, you open your, for example, Airflow and you can see this page. Uh, sorry, uh, Esan, for interruption. Can you please again uh, show the previous view of uh, the codes or a scripts? Sure. So yeah. uh, for everyone's uh, benefit, uh, these codes are written in Python. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. Uh, can you please uh, uh, very quickly review uh, some of the files for everyone? Yeah, sure. So, um, if I wanted to explain this part of code, I'm going to show, I'm going to explain at first uh, the DAG structure at first, and then I'm going to explain the code part. Does it sound good? Okay, sounds sure. good. Okay. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. So, the DAG skeleton or the structure of your DAG should uh, followed as this process. We should provide a DAG name. We should provide a default, some default argument which Airflow needed. We should provide it some task or operator. And then the question which Matt provides us, we can provide some error handling here. Here is the main concept and main structure of the DAG which we can provide. Okay, Airflow provide a provide lots of process in order to create your DAG. But the basic, the basic uh, process which we can do is uh, this follow, okay? So I'm going to go back to the code and explain a little bit about the Python file. I'm going to the Python file. Here is the Python file which I provided for us in the Airflow UI. So, in order to run a new or to implement a new Airflow file, you need to, at first, uh, getting some library from the Airflow. At first, you need to uh, import Airflow from the Airflow library. And uh, whenever you need a new operator, you need to define the new operator, for example, you need a bash operator, I provide a bash operator here. But someday you say, okay, I have a data sources, a snowflake, and I need the snowflake operator as well. Okay, we are importing the snowflake operator here to load the data from the snowflake. So in the uh, first line of the code, you are going to add some library and getting some library from the airflow library, from whatever. Python library which existed. And then you're going to start the first 
uh, line of your DAC. Okay, as I mentioned here, this first step is we provide the name and then we are providing information about default argument. You can see here, I'm provided this default argument for my DAC. I'm the owner of this DAC. For example, you can change it to Matt, the owner of the DAC, and the start date of this DAC. Uh, you have a data sources, and your stakeholder asks you, okay, can you please run your job, uh, for example, uh, from uh, last year, and you just need to change this year to the last year, and I start running your job. And Airflow automatically run your job steps by steps uh, from the last year. So we are getting the started here and retries and retries play. Okay, so those kind of thing is related to the error handling which Matt asked us to explain. Okay, let me explain this part and then go back to the For Airflow, uh, provides the robust error handling and retry mechanism uh, for dealing uh, with uh, failures in workflow. Okay, when a task fails, Airflow will uh, by default retry the task uh, to a configurable number of times before making as it fail. So there are several configurable parameters that control the behavior of your Airflow retry mechanism such as retry and such as retry delay. Retries means the number of times that Airflow will attempt to run the task before giving up to the fail. For example, you have a task and your task is going to be fail for one time, two time, three time. You said to that, okay, after five times, my DAG, my task is going to be fail. But if it's not failed, it's trying to run for about five times, okay? And another thing related to error handling is related to retry delay. In the retry, I'm gonna show you. The retry delay is between of each failure which the task faces, you're going to uh, say, okay, can you please uh, wait for about five minutes? and then retry the task again. For example, let's say you have a data sources in your uh, database and your data is going to be ready at 8, 10 a.m. every day. And your DAG is going to be run at 10.30 every day. But for some reason, your data is not available at 10 a.m. in the data sources. And your task is going to load that specific data from that data source. And when it's failed, your task uh, uh, show you, okay, it's going to retry. And after five minutes, your task is going to be run again, okay? So that's why we are defining retries and retry delay here. I said, okay, whenever my task is failure, just run it for one time and for let me change it to two just run it for two time and between of each failure uh there is a delay uh, and i i will say okay waiting for five minutes and then run my uh task again and this is uh, the basic uh example of uh airflow error handling but we do have lots of error handling a feature which Airflow can provide us, but this is the simplest way that Airflow uh, provides us. Okay, so another thing related to create a new basic DAC is uh, creating a DAC, a skeleton DAC object here. And we uh, called our DAC simple bash operator. This is the name of our DAC. And we are calling and we are getting some default arguments here. And I said, okay, please run this job at once. Or maybe please run this job as a daily basis, as a, for example, weekly basis. 
and this kind of as a hourly basis. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, and um, you can uh, tell, for example, uh, please run this job from whatever time and interval which you uh, want. But uh, I'm gonna change it to the daily, and this ex this specific DAC is going to be run every day on a daily basis. So another thing which we mentioned here is task, the third steps. In a task, we just need to create a, this a structure here and create a name for this tab. For example, I'm going to change it to 1111 to make sense for you guys and say, OK, I'm creating a new bash operator to run just echo hello world this is task one and this is a simple bash operator just i just wanted to show you how we can integrate it with airflow and how we can call in some operator from the python library but we do have lots of operators such as redshift operator s3 operator sql server operator but this is the simplest way that i can show you how airflow can manage the data sources for you okay i I named the task for run bash task 1111 and I changed task ID to the, I give it another name to the task ID. And here is the bash command which we have. For example, you wanted to create a, a new directory in your, uh, for example, application. And you said, encoder, for example, creating new uh, file here. Blah, 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 okay? So this batch operator is just running a simple um, uh, Linux command. And then I'm gonna uh, call the DAC object here to set the airflow. Okay, can you please call my DAC object? I wanted to run my task. And after the task is created, I'm going to uh, set the graph or set the task dependency to each other. And you can see I have one, two, three, four tasks here, and I need to set the dependency and set the DAG for four tasks here. I change it to this task to one, 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 just to give you a better idea to see it's not set default. So, okay, in, so, so in fact, in fact, here we want to enforce what comes first what comes next and what comes right. next after that exactly kind of prerequisite we define the prerequisite and tax task dependency exactly and those are called downstream and upstream tasks for example th this task is depend on this task so this is the downstream task which airflow um name it and this is the uh upstream task in general maybe. And yeah, uh, this is the simplest way that we can provide and implement our data pipeline here. And let me... Uh, and for example, sorry, for example, that run bash task 1111 is a, a collection of bash task itself. So, exactly. here, we, so here we say, Firstly, do this, 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 and then after that, finish, go and uh, start and um, uh, set up this. And after it, that, finish, go and begin a collection of other tasks. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, here is my deck and um, Airflow UI, and I create a new task here run bash task 111. And those are downstream, and this is the upstream that uh, task of this specific task. And uh, for yeah. instance, for instance, can we dive into one of these tasks? Can we, for instance, uh, go deeper? Yeah, me, one yeah, of them. Run, yeah, let me run the. I'm going to clear the task, and to show you the input of my task. So you can see here. The, the process of our DAG is going to be run. For example, one task is going to be success, another one is going to be scheduled, and then is going to be running. 
at first the task is going to be um, named as a non, then schedule, and then running. If tax fails, or for some reason, the task is going to be changed to the, for example, up for retry, because I provided the airflow here and said, okay, uh, if the task is retried, uh, can you please try for two times and then fail it? And that's why the task is going to be changed as it says. Okay, let me refresh the that. So all the tasks is clear and run. So let me open the new log of the task. And you can see it show you hello world. This is task one. This is just a simple. Uh, but right this is just simple hello world uh, prompt yeah. but in the real world each task can be defined as a sql uh, for instance update or insert we can update a database or tables or we can insert multiple rows at once or bulk exactly. insert or something like that in our data pipeline so exactly. as an exactly. example in electronic arts uh, across the world, we have uh, millions of uh, players and they are simultaneously play together. For instance, they are playing FIFA or whatever. So at the same time, they are playing together. Can you please elaborate in that, in that context, for example, the concept of those data pipelines or DAC in a way? Yeah. So... Uh, let's say we have a database uh, such as, for example, uh, Google BigQuery, okay? And uh, in order to create your data pipeline, uh, your data is already in uh, the GCP. So you just need to uh, implement a new uh, GCP operator in order to run some SQL file and um, implement those uh, GCP operator um, as a downstream and upstream uh, task which you have and run your uh, data from the data sources into your, core, into your targeted database. So um, let's say, um, for example, uh, we don't have a batch operator here. We can have a GCP operator here. And when this GCP operator uh, run, for example, we have this SQL file here, for example, this is a simple uh, SQL which I created and run those SQL script for us and when this is done it's going to be the next steps and uh, we can have lots of uh, operator here as I said for example this is the GCP operator another one when we load the data from GCP we can load it for example in S3 we can load it in for example uh, Snowflake we can load it in uh, for example, uh, Agile SQL, you know, and this is an example which uh, uh, we do it in a daily routine. Yeah. So we thanks. Uh, that was a really helpful overview. While we have talked about uh, lots of benefits of Airflow, there are always potential uh, limitations or uh, drawbacks to consider. Uh, Ehsan, can you uh, share any situation where Airflow may not be the best choice or best tool? So, um, why Airflow is a powerful tool for building and managing data workflow, uh, there are some uh, limitations and potential drawback uh, that should be considered in a certain situation. Uh, for example, uh, we have a resource requirement. Airflow requires significant resource to run, including CPU, memory, disk space, um, and large workflow. For example, we have a big data, and with many dependency uh, can require even uh, more resources. And this can lead to a high infrastructure costs, especially if you need uh, to scale Airflow to support a high volume of data and processing. Another thing uh, that I can mention is related maybe it's non-Python user. For example, Airflow has a steep learning curve, especially uh, for users who are not familiar with Python or distributed system. 
this can make it challenging for new users to get started with Airflow and can require significant time to resource and to fully understand the process and how we can uh, implement a new DAG with a Python. Airflow requires ongoing maintenance and upgrade to keep it running smoothly and uh, to, to take advantage of a new feature of improvement. This can require significant time, resource uh, to manage, especially if you are running uh, Airflow uh, at a scale. Thank you, Esan. That was a really uh, balanced uh, perspective on uh, the topic. Uh, don't hesitate to ask any question. Just chime in or raise your hand or send any question in the chat room, please. Okay, Esan, can you give us uh, an overview of what electronic art is or uh, EA company provides and what kind of products or services that they offer in the market for people who are not familiar with the gaming industry? For me, EA reminded me of uh, my childhood when I played with FIFA. So EA is a big name in gaming industry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Electronic Art uh, is a global video game uh, company that develops and publishes interactive entertainment software for a variety of uh, platforms, including PlayStation, including Xbox, including uh, HD titles for PC, okay, and also mobile. Uh, and the headquarters is in uh, Redwood City. And um, EA is known for pr producing a wide range of uh, popular game, video games such as FIFA, uh, Madden, NFL, uh, NHL, and for example, Battlefield, um, uh, uh, Apex Legends, Sims, and those kind of games. And in addition to developing also some uh, and publishing some video games, EA also offers an online service platform uh, that including uh, EA Play and uh, Origin, uh, which allows users to access uh, to a library of video games. I have more uh, presentation slides or you are done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, so I can share the screen for people who are not familiar with the EA just or for everyone's benefit. This is their website, ea.com. And uh, like Esan said, they are one of the uh, biggest game developers in the world. Uh, headquartered in Redwood City in California, established in 1982. So, uh, and uh, the company was, like we said, and Esan mentioned, was a pioneer of the early home computer game industry and promoted the designers and programmers responsible for its game as software artists. That's why their company name is Electronic Arts, because they believe that their programmers are artists. And uh, EA published numerous games and some uh, productivity software for personal computers. Also, uh, in digital interactive ecosystem. So one of their famous games are Battlefields, FIFA, Sims, Madden, NFL, and uh, so on and so forth. And uh, the other question I wanted to ask uh, Ehsan is about uh, what advice do you have for aspiring data engineers? who wants to work in the gaming industry or at EA specifically, if they have any chance. Do you have any uh, specific advice or mm -hmm. something that they can pursue? Sure. Uh, so if you are uh, aspiring to work as a data engineer specifically in a gaming industry, um, sure. maybe not gaming industry, as a data engineer, uh, the first thing is to raise up is building a strong foundation for your skill. I start by building a strong foundation in data engineering, uh, data engineering principles, such as uh, data modeling, such as database designers, such as ETL processes. Uh, familiarize yourself with different data storage, 
and processing things such as Spark and relational databases. And the second thing which I wanted to uh, recommend, uh, if you want to if you wanted to work as a data engineer, gain the practical experience. In order to gain the practical experience uh, by working on a data engineering projects such as building ETL, data pipeline, data warehouses, and data lakes, use different data storage, working with uh, different platforms such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and gain a hands-on experience with the real World data engineering. There was lots of online courses, for example, in Coursera and LinkedIn Academy in Udemy website that you can start learning those, for example, those experiences from the professional and to know and get a better idea about how data engineer uh, work at the real company or real, for example, uh, experiences. And um, also, if you wanted to uh, be, as a data engineering, the most important thing is develop your soft skill in order to develop your hard skill. Developing soft skill, such as communication, teamwork, problem solving, these are essential for working in a collaborate environment. Uh, where, you will, where you will need to communicate effectively uh, with the different stakeholders, in including, uh, for example, the game developers, analysts, business, and stakeholders, program manager, and this kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, the first thing which I mentioned, build your strong foundation, learn whatever needs in data engineering, such as SQL, TSQL, Python, uh, Java, and then uh, focusing on your hands-on experience, and then focusing on your soft skills. Thanks. That was a very informative answer. Uh, Lucia raised her hand. Thank you for such um, wonderful events. <laughs> Thank you both. And I'd like to know what's your um, uh, what's your comments from both of you? What's your comments about uh, AI and uh, data engineer and data science? Would you see this trend? Uh, what's the effect? or a fact to our um, futures? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to say um, we don't exactly know what happened in the future uh, in terms of some positioning related uh, data engineer or whatever, you know, uh, software engineer. But as I see, the process of uh, working as a developer in the future uh, would be as a dynamic process and everyone uh, needs at least to know a little about the coding and to improve your uh, technical side of your uh, software engineering uh, experts and in order to work with other tools and uh, for example let's say we uh, in the previous year we didn't have uh, some tools which we can extract data for us and load it for example in other data sources but uh, in coming years, we, we just have lots of data platform uh, tools that load it and get the data from the data sources, such as Fivetran, such as, for example, Airflow, and these tools that we didn't have before. And if a data engineer or if the software engineer wants to work and wants to be in a market, I think uh, the passage is to uh, work on the uh, technical side of uh, his or her, um, you know, experience such as Python, such as Java, and this kind of stuff, and also working with the tools, new tools which is coming, and to integrate it, that technique, that technical side, Python, for example, developing, and with the tools which uh, provided. And I'm not sure what happened, but um, you know, uh, this is the uh, thing that I I think uh, would be best choice. If I want to add more to what Ehsan correctly mentioned, one major change that we expect to see uh, in the tech industry, like Ehsan mentioned, no one knows about the future. No one has a uh, ability to uh, in, uh, anticipate everything, but 
Uh, one major change is that with emergence of AI tools and chat chatbots, there is a shift in the type of uh, skills and expertise that are in demand. So as more tasks are automated with chat GPT and AI, the focus is likely uh, to shift towards more creative and strategic roles that require human input and the decision making for uh, uh, actually uh, the AI. So AI has been created by human is essentially right. For example, roles that involve designing and implementing AI solution or analyzing data inside or providing a strategic direction are becoming increasingly important. Also, another important uh, trend we, we can expect, like we said, we can anticipate very precisely, but we can expect to see a greater emphasis on uh, collaboration and uh, interdisciplinary skills. Like Ehsan mentioned, soft skills is very crucial. Uh, and. Uh, also, this this should this can be seen as an opportunity for developers, software engineers, and data engineers, data scientists, because AI like ChatGPT really help you to enhance and uh, accelerate your learning. Right? It's not only a treat; it's a it's a very very good opportunity for learning faster. Uh, and before emergence of AI and chat GPT, you needed to uh, Google everything in a stack overflow and, and, and deep diving into lots of uh, rooms <laughs> and uh, right. But now we, we just uh, type one paragraph and AI give us lots of insights. And overall, I think the emergence of AI is likely to have a very deep impact on tech industry. So, uh, this, this was my take on, on, on top of what Ehsan said. Also, other people, Ehsan, have some question for you. Mahmoud is saying, uh, could you please provide some competitors of Airflow in the market? I think you mentioned some of them. Uh, yeah, I already mentioned some of them in the first slide, uh, but we do have uh, some uh competitor of airflow which is called aws step functions uh dagesters and uh, nifi apache nifi and power automated the aws and power automated uh, are the aws is uh, implemented by uh, amazon and the power automated also implemented by microsoft but these are uh, have lots of not lots of but these are have uh, perks and uh, come, but uh, yeah, um, but I think the Apache Airflow is the most uh, interesting one. And uh, another question I have, uh, tell me please one uh, thing that you really like working in uh, EA. If I wanted to say in summary, I love EA because I learned everything every day in EA, okay? For example, you learn every day. You talk with someone, have some uh, special expertise, and you don't know about it, and talk with him, okay, hey, can you please explain me what the process you are guys doing, what the team you are guys working on it, and you learn a lot uh, in terms of collaborate with other people, and that's why I learned, I love EA, uh, because you love, you learn every day, uh, and you can uh, work with high tech uh, technology and tools in EA, and that's why it's really interesting for me uh, to work at EA. Beautiful. Uh, what about yourself, Esan? Do you want to uh, add something at the end? No, uh, all good. Um, feel free to reach out to my LinkedIn or the email address which we provide us if you have any other questions. And uh, yeah, we are happy to connect with you as well. So I would like to thank everyone that, uh, for attending and for their attention throughout the session. And I think uh, we covered uh, some of the basics of 
uh, Apache Airflow. Personally, I never had exposure uh, learning that because I work in another ecosystems and technology, but it was helpful and informative. Thanks again, Esan, and just feel free to uh, send us emails uh, or if you have any comment, uh, just uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Uh, I hope you found the session informative and valuable and just reach out to us for any question or feedback. I look forward to uh, hearing from you again, and uh, I wish uh, luck for Ehsan in uh, her, his uh, journey in EA and uh, other uh, uh, projects or initiative that he's involved in. Thank you, Ehsan. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Sure.